Hi, you're watching West Bloomfield 911. I'm Officer David McNeely, and on behalf of Chief Michael Patton and my Deputy Chief Kurt Lawson and my brothers and sisters in blue, I'd like to welcome you all to the show. This is my partner, Zena Daly. I guess I'd like to welcome Josh Keyes and Amy Strauss from Henry Ford Hospital. Welcome. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Guys, I'm going to ask you to hang tight for one second while we flip the show over to Zena's Daily on the Daily. Hello, West Bloomfield, and welcome to Daily on the Daily. Let's start with Ask a Cop a Question. This question comes from Lily in West Bloomfield. Lily asks, why does it take more than one cop to pull someone over? Most of the time, it only takes one officer to actually pull someone over. But other officers will show up to back up that officer. officer. The backup officers don't know who the initial officer pulled over, so they're just there to assist in case that officer needs help or to be extra eyes. If the officer that made the traffic stop doesn't need backup, they can choose to cancel the backup units. But for the officer's safety, it's always nice to have an extra officer, extra set of eyes close by. Thank you for the question, Lily. Be like Lily, like us on Facebook, West Bloomfield Police Department. Throw a question up there for us, and we'll try to answer that for you as well. Moving on today, we're going to talk about heroin and fentanyl. Heroin is becoming more and more widely used around the country. In 2015, 1,275 people in Michigan died from opioid overdoses. That's more than gun deaths and traffic fatalities. In 2016, the CDC reported three out of four people addicted to heroin started off using opioid painkillers, such as Oxycontin and Vicodin. Most are prescribed to themselves or family members. People misusing the prescribed painkillers start looking for a stronger and cheaper, a, a stronger and cheaper high, and heroin is both of those. One of our sergeants, Sergeant Metcalf of West Bloomfield Police Department, appeared on an episode of The Splash more recently, and he spoke about some of the signs in, of heroin use. So I encourage you to look that up if you can and watch those videos. Um, you'll start noticing different um, behaviors and different behaviors in your child, and if you're unsure what that's all about. Um, there are some characteristics that he actually points out that you might want to look out for. One of the units he worked for was the narcotic enforcement team and was able to see firsthand how much heroin is actually coming into our community. I'll talk about some of the signs that you want to look out for. Poor hygiene, a change in behavior, they start losing weight, feeling sick more frequently, grades start to drop. Um, items from the home start going missing, um, odd sleeping patterns, scabs or sores from, from picking at your skin, flush skin, small pupils, watery eyes, uh, runny nose, itchy skin, and drowsy or relaxed. Items you might find that um, can also indicate heroin use in the home, you would see things like uh, sandwich corner bag ties, needles, burnt spoons, or lottery tickets folded into a packet, which is usually how um, heroin is packaged. The National Institute of Drug Abuse states that common short-term side effects of use are initial euphoric rush, nausea and vomiting, severe itching, um, slowed heart rate after the initial rush, drowsiness for hours, uh, heaviness of limbs, um, and clouded thinking. If you don't know that your loved one is using heroin, you may dismiss the signs as the flu or being in a bad mood, but the signs will persist um, if they're actually using heroin. So what heroin looks like, it's usually a white powder Sometimes, you know, it's a white or a brown powder and sometimes a black tar. It's made from morphine from the seed pod of various opium poppy plants. It can be smoked or snorted, but most commonly it's injected into the veins. And um, it, that's actually the most dangerous way to take it because it actually can cause an overdose more, overdose more easily. More recently, heroin has been laced with a powerful painful painkiller, fentanyl, and the users are usually unaware of the mixture. Heroin and fentanyl both act as a depressant, which, which creates drowsiness, sedation, and respiratory depression. When too much is taken, uh, one can experience so much respiratory depression, uh, they slip into a coma or die. Fentanyl is so powerful that when mixed with heroin, it can cause death within a matter of minutes. Officers of the West Bloomfield Police Department are trained to use naloxone, when responding to an overdose, it rapidly binds the opioid receptors and blocks the effects of heroin and other opioid drugs. We have had a lot of great officers save lives by using naloxone on the road. Um, Michigan has joined, has joined at least 30 other states in making naloxone available without a prescription, so you're able to pick those up um, at a local pharmacy. I also want to mention the West Bluefield Police Department has Operation Medicine Cabinet, 
where you can bring in your unused medication. Getting rid of any unused medication reduces the risk of your child getting their hands on it. And like I said earlier, three out of four people addicted to heroin start by using prescription medication. West Bloomfield, that's your daily on the daily. Dave, back to you. It's a lot of great information. Thank you so much for that on our listeners and, and viewers. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate the information. You guys are going to ask you to hang on for a second longer where we're going to go to a short station break. Folks, we'll be right back. You're watching West Bloomfield 911 on Civic Center TV, a service of the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission. For more information or to watch episodes on demand, visit civiccentertv.com slash WB911. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. The West Bloomfield Police Foundation raises money to help those who protect and serve the community. Whether it's emotional or financial support, the foundation provides a helping hand to officers, their families, and those in the community. For more information on the West Bloomfield Police Foundation, contact Kurt Lawson at 248-975-8900 or visit wbpolicefoundation.org. Welcome back, guys. I'm David McNeely. I'm Zena Daly. Well, welcome back, Josh Keys. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Thanks Charles. Thank you, Josh. you guys are you guys are Good with Henry Ford Hospital. Yes. So I'm just going to jump right into this. We spoke a little bit off air, and Z and I both know. Is it okay to call you Josh? Absolutely. Super. <laughs> we we both know Josh from We've the emergency room at Henry Ford <laughs> Hospital, and Z and I both, you know, to kind of touch on uh, topics she talked about on the daily and the daily. We might have a customer that may not be so happy when we see you, but you're you're always nice and greet us greet us nicely when we see you in the right. ER. It does happen, but we try to do our best. So, so viewers that don't know, I'm a community uh, relations officer and a crime prevention specialist. And so I found myself running into uh, Josh at community events, and I was kind of taken aback. I said, wait a minute, I'm used to, used to seeing this guy when I've got an unhappy customer right. with me. And next thing you know, I see you doing some community outreach stuff. Can you tell us what that is? Um, so we offer uh, hands-only CPR training to com the community. Um, it could be as simple as a school or a church or a Boy Scout, Girl Scout group that just wants to learn the American Heart Association's um, hands-only CPR. It's not the full certification, but it gets the community some knowledge and understanding of what to do if they were to see somebody that was in a cardiac arrest. And this is a, a free service that you're offering to them? It is free. So it's actually myself and some of the volunteer from the nurses in the emergency department that we get to help us. Um, and it's free of charge. We come out. It's our time that we take and try and help the community any way we can. And you were also, you brought this to the table at Henry Ford. How did that come about? I did. So one of, uh, one of my colleagues that works at a fire department in another city um, does some of these events in their city. Um, and I thought it would be great for not only the fire departments to do it, but for the emergency department staff, for the nurses that mm -hmm. kind of take over from when the fire departments drop the patients off, that we could go out and teach them as well. Have you got a big response? We have. We've done four or five events. Wow. Um, I've seen you at several events. And like I said, I kept, I kept seeing him. I go, man, I got to, I got to bring him on the show, but I mean, so you guys basically pioneered, you're pioneering it for Henry Ford West Bloomfield. As far as I know, we're, we, we are the first at West Bloomfield to do it, and in our entire health system, I believe we're the only ones doing that's this great. kind of training. And, and it's free, that's amazing. Yes, especially because, you know, there's people that, you know, daycare workers or, um, you know, kids that, old enough teens that want to start babysitting, and they need to know, they're, some of them do have to be certified, right. like daycare workers, but it's all, you know, if you can't afford to have, you know, what is it, 50, 60 bucks, I think, sure to get the training and certification, but if you're gonna go babysit the neighbor kids, you wanna have that training, you wanna know, you know what to do. And you said hands-free, what, tell the viewers what, what does that mean? So hands-only is literally just using your hands to do the compressions. Um, the, the normal CPR basic life support class, they teach you to incorporate breathing in, into that as well. Um, this is just for the community, if you see an adult or teen that collapses, um, to immediately start CPR, because that's gonna okay. be their is best Is that just chance. compressions? Just compressions, just the up and down pushing on the chest, right in the center of the chest, about 100 times a minute. Wow. Nice. To the tune of um, staying, the staying Alive. alive. The, BG. That's, oh. the BGs. The BGs. That's, that's, that's how fast you need to go. To go. Oh, okay. okay. So that's a, if, you, if you count it out, that's 100 beats per minute, that song. So that just segues me into <laughs> to, to Amy, because every time I see you at an event, I, I ran into to Amy, and she also works for Henry Ford also. 
and, and so tell us what you do. Well, at Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital, um, we have a, a very strong commitment to the community. And when I say the community, that's West Bloomfield and all of Western Oakland County. Okay. And so we try to really engage with our partners like the police department, Greater West Bloomfield Community Coalition, mm -hmm. the fire department, several other nonprofits in, in providing um, our services and our wellness offerings, which I'll talk about in a minute, to um, the public. And um, one thing I just want to point out for the hands-only CP is you really can learn it in about two minutes and what's been great to see is how Josh and the volunteers are really training teens and kids in this because That's we were awesome. talking earlier about the fact that people are are a little bit afraid of, yeah. of doing CPR full-blown CPR this you teach um, when Josh teaches it's call 911 and start compressions and don't stop until they get there so is it just as effective it is, it, you know, the, the majority of people survive from out of hospital CPR is when CP, CPR is done immediately. Okay. It gives them their best chance of survival. It can, it can sometimes double and triple their survival rates. So, so, so specifically with uh, compressions, what, what, what does that help? I mean, what's, what's happening when I'm just giving compressions? So for the first few minutes after somebody collapses, uh, that first few minutes of CPR is actually pushing the oxygen that's left over into their system mm -hmm. through the vital organs to keep them alive. So it helps them until the EMS providers can get there and give the higher advanced treatment of life support to, to kind of help that patient try to bring them back to life. So when did you guys start, because I, I know, like I said, I've seen you at so many events. When did you guys decide to start doing it? Who, who decided that this is a great thing and it's got to go out to the public as one of your outreaches? Well, I would just say br Josh brought the idea to me and we, through a, a very uh, generous philanthropic fund, have uh, funds to do community education events. And after speaking with our CEO, Lynn uh, Tarosian, about it, she thought it was an awesome idea. Oh, cool. We were able to purchase the two dummies Correct. that we have that That's go out. Awesome. And um, what's very cool about it, too, they light up, so they actually show the flow of blood uh, okay. coming from the heart Correct. up into the brain. So people can actually see what what they're doing, what they're... And how hard to actually so you can put see it the down and not be scared. Of it. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. right. So Josh was the one who brought it up, and um, it's kind of going going gangbusters. Like tomorrow he's going to be um, at a parenting fair um, so in you, you'll go out. County. You'll go out to um, like community events I've seen mm -hmm. you. Where, where, where won't you go? Uh, I haven't found one <laughs> as of yet. <laughs> he goes everywhere, folks. <laughs> Call him. <laughs> and anywhere that they have a group, we'll, we'll, we'll be more than happy to come on and train people. And, and just to get, get them familiar with it and everything else, yep. right? It's not, some knowledge is better than nothing. So oh, even awesome. the littlest amount is going to save somebody's life. Now, Josh, you have a lot of jobs. Mm -hmm. So we've seen you in the capacity of being a nurse. With right? our customers. Board, yes. I am, yep. And uh, you're also the EMS coordinator. I am. Right? So what does that entail? So I'm... I'm the liaison between the hospital and the fire departments and the police departments. I try to develop relationships so that we all work well together. Um, if there's ever any, any issues with equipment or anything like that that they need, we try and help them out. Okay. Um, I also attend all of the county meetings in Oakland County um, for the Med Control Board. So there's, there's some meetings that I go to to bring back information to the hospital. So you're a bridge builder like, like AB. You're, you guys are bridge we builders. Are, and that's, that's great, though. You, you have to have those things. you really got to have those things. I agree. So we talked a little bit off air about like the long hours. We can work sometimes that you, sure. I'm sure, work. What do you do to stay motivated when you're working with the patients? Because at some point you got to feel like you're just tired and sure. you, you, know, you just you're have human. a hard time talking. Right. 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 <laughs> uh, what do you do to stay motivated? You know, I think it's just it's, it's why, we, why I specifically went into nursing to take care of patients and help people out. Um, you know, you do get busy and sometimes it, you fall off track a little bit. But right. going out and teaching people and learning and getting to see the kids' excitement and, and when somebody learns something that you've taught them and they can some, at some point down the line put that to use. You guys have a, an amazing campus, and I will tell you, when I am on campus there or at your facility there, I, I feel healthier. It just it just makes me feel good. The I mean, it, the whole thing feels good, and it feels cool, and it's it's a neat place, neat place to be. You guys are unique in that fact, um, and the way your uh, hospital is set up when you enter it is, is that done obviously for the. Purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Welcoming. Yeah, it right. is very welcoming. So just a little bit of history. We're the we're the only hospital in our health system that was really built from the ground up. Our main campus is over a hundred years old, and so as as an age, you know, as it aged, it grew right. and it kind of got added on to. Yeah. Our other hospitals, Wyandotte and Macomb, were acquired, so they were already built. But the West Bloomfield campus is very unique in that about eight and a half years ago when we opened, 
it was um, it was done very purposefully in terms of the way it looks and the way it was built. And we we look like a community center, and that right. was done on purpose. We want people to come in and and be comfortable and take advantage of what we have to offer, whether it's the gift shop, our pharmacy, our amazing Henry's Cafe that serves healthy food, mm -hmm. um, or or all of the doctors who have clinics in our building. Um, we want the community to feel like it's their hospital right. and to come in and, and and be at ease when they're there. You know, I, I work midnights, so typically I never get to go to the main doors. Right. I'm always going to the emergency doors, so I see that part of it. Um, but recently I actually did walk into the main doors, and I was impressed because it does it is really beautiful in there, the way it's set up, and it is very welcoming and inviting. And that, that was all done on purpose, but I will say, you know, as beautiful and as wonderful as it looks, we wouldn't be um, half as much as we are without our people. Right. And we have For an sure. amazing staff who care very deeply about the patients and the staff, the, their colleagues as well. And I think that really shows through. You know, we bring a lot of people in um, for mental health reasons as well. And I can't tell you how amazing the staff is. Again, I work midnight, so we're talking about the midnight crew that I usually see, but they are amazing. Like they literally bring people down when they're, you know, at a at a high, and do a really great job. Yeah, you guys do a great job. In, yeah, in, for in, sure. In the ER, there, like I said, I was just so impressed with the fact that there's this skill set that I see at your ER, and then to to find out that you know your health system provides yeah. all these different things like I said cooking classes and, and we're talking about cooking classes because we we, we have our uh, West Bloomfield Police Foundation and you guys uh, were gracious enough to help get us some some donations for that foundation which is an amazing cause but I, I didn't know at the time that you guys were not only right. helping us out but you guys are spread out through like you said greater Oakland County and doing all these great things to help people it, it's it's amazing that you guys do that and that you're that your organization believes in it so strongly. Well, that's a co and that's a commitment from the health system. I mean, that you'll see that in Macomb, you'll see that in Wyandotte downtown. That's that is um, it's kind of threaded through the fabric of who we are. And um, I I feel very fortunate to work for an organization like that. I do too. Absolutely, too. it's a great yeah. place to work. So. Tell us again, how, how do we get a hold of how do we get a hold of you if we um, want? The easiest way is if you send me an email, it's um, J K E Y E S, the number one at hfhs.org. And so they have Henry to Ford specifically Health tell you, do they need to tell you like how many people are gonna be present? It would help to know what the what the event name is, do, how do many people. Do you need people. to put tables out for you? Will you bring tables? I can bring tables. It's 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 obviously welcomed if they have tables to work, but we do have tables that we can bring out. Um, but the, the number of people would help as well, just so we can find out how many volunteers we would need to bring to help train. And Amy, same question with you. Like if, uh, if somebody, if there's a community mm -hmm. uh, outreach a situation where I know I'm going to run into you guys anyway, but if there's somebody, somebody wants um, some assistance mm -hmm. uh, from from Henry Ford, or they've got an event going on where mm -hmm. where you guys could be present, how do they get a hold of you? Right, they, same same way. You can email me or any of my colleagues um, in my office. Really, um, we all are out in the community quite a bit, but uh, my email is a s t r a u s the number one at hfhs.org. Um, and we, we try as much as we can to um, facilitate all those um, inquiries and try to help uh, organizations and community groups as much as we can, um, knowing that we do have a limited budget, but we look right. for creative ways to help, um, like the gift basket donations and things like that. Um, we can we can usually make it work. Josh, thank you, thank you very much. Amy, thanks. Yes. thanks for coming sure. on. Thank you, Amy. Thanks. A lot of sure. great information. Guys, that's going to do it for us. You can keep up with the police department by liking us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can also check out Nexel.com, CrimeMapping.com for the most up-to-date information regarding the police department. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.